Hello everyone, welcome to Video Cassat, a museum tour of the life of Mary Cassat. Feel free to follow along in your brochure. Thank you so much for working with us as we move to a virtual tour due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have two great music options to enhance your tour. Please feel free to select whichever one you prefer. To begin, we will start with the walls about Mary's early years. She was born on May 22, 1844 in Pennsylvania to Robert Cassatt and Katherine Johnston. She grew up in an environment where travel was just as important as a formal education. Mary spent five years in Europe during her youth and visited many capitals such as London, Paris, and Berlin. While abroad, Mary learned French and German and she had her first lessons in drawing and music. She also attended the Paris World Fair in 1855 and had her first exposure to French artists Jean Ingres, Eugene Delacroix, Camille Corot, and Gustave Courbet. These artists helped to fuel her passion for art. Next, we learn about how Mary made a name for herself. At age 15, Cassatt began her professional journey by studying at Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. It was uncommon for women to study arts at this academy, but Mary persisted in her career, leading her to move to Paris, where she began art lessons with masters of the arts, including Jean-Léon Jerome. Later, Mary paired her studying with copying paintings in the Louvre, where she harnessed her skills and mingled with other blooming artists. Mary's styles continued to develop, focusing on depicting people in both personal and public spheres. One of Mary's paintings, a mandolin player pictured on the right, was accepted for the first time by the Paris Salon. This painting is one of the only paintings that is documented from her first decade of artistry. Mary lived in a time of radical change. Artists were moving away from traditional art styles, and Mary fought to keep up with these changes, but was confronted with a great deal of trial and error. Dissatisfied with the restrictions of contemporary art, Cassatt wanted to do things differently. In 1877, she was invited to join a group of artists known as the Independents. Today, this group is better known as the Impressionists. Her paintings incorporated characteristics of Impressionism, such as short brush strokes, a focus on everyday events, and atmospheric effects of light and shadow. These techniques can be seen here in her painting, Summertime. Like the other Impressionists, Cassatt sought to capture a moment in time. Her work captured moments of women in public spheres, such as the painting on the left, and private spheres such as the painting Breakfast in Bed on the right. This painting also captures an intimate moment between a mother and child, one of the common themes of her work. Cassatt was avant-garde in her paintings and her lifestyle. As an educated professional artist who never married, she defied the expectations for women of her time. Mary Cassatt advocated for women's equality, portraying women who are capable, independent, and strong. For example, the painting A Woman and a Girl Driving, put women at the reins, showing them capable of physical tasks like carriage driving. The child sitting beside the woman also conveys the importance of teaching and raising an independent generation of women. Moving on to our Degas and Cassatt section of this tour. It is said that when Degas saw this painting here at the Paris Salon, he exclaimed, here is someone who feels as I do. And of course, this was painted by Cassatt. Moving on. Degas and Cassatt enjoyed a long and artistic relationship. In fact, it was recently discovered that this first painting here was done by both the artists, though predominantly Mary. Looking at the, the middle two paintings, these were completed around the same time and they show how the artists took different artistic risks together. And finally, this last painting. Cassatt was known for having modeled in at least eight of Degas's paintings, including this one solely of her. Now, there is speculation whether the two were romantically involved. However, the general consensus is that they were not. Mary was already taking a big risk associating with the Impressionists, and she also wanted to be recognized as a standalone artist, and not just as Degas' lover. Well, wrapping up our tour with Cassatt's later years and legacy she's left behind, in the latter part of her career, the 1890s, uh, these were some of Cassatt's busiest and most creative years. Along with continuing to paint, Cassatt also advised American artists, female and male, in their own efforts. She helped establish the Shelburne Museum, whose art is pictured above with artists like Manet, Degas, and Cassatt herself. It, also, it still stands as the only public exhibition of Impressionism in Vermont. Besides that, her influence is far-reaching. A World War II Liberty ship was named after her in 1943. The U.S. Stamp Gallery honored her with her boating party in 1966. In 1985, four Juilliard students formed an all-female group, the Cassatt Quartet. They're still going strong. And 2009 saw the highest honor anyone could receive in a birthday Google Doodle. Of course, the Women's Hall of Fame indicted Cassatt in 1973. She'd earned her place as the only American and one of the only female impressionists of the 19th century. 
Thanks so much for joining us in this video cassette. Have a good day and stay healthy.